Hey, this is Dennis. Um, it's Thursday. I just want to get back in the Word. We're in the book of Revelation. No, I'll take that back. We done finished Revelations. We're in the book of Matthew. And we're going to start out with chapter 3. And in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. So here's a famous prophet out of the Bible, John the Baptist. He's not preaching in the church or in some major city. He's out in the wilderness preaching. And he's saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I think he's referring to Jesus here because Jesus is King of kings and lords of lords of an everlasting kingdom of heaven. And the only way to get in that kingdom of God is through Jesus Christ. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So here is the Esaias, the prophet, and he's talking about, well, foretelling John the Baptist, crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord, Jesus Christ. And the same John in his raiment of camel hair so he, his clothing was out of camel hair and the leathern girdle, a leather girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. So this must have been a really wild looking dude the way he was dressed and what he was eating too. He was eating locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan and were baptized of him in the Jordan, meaning the Jordan River, confessing their sins. So John the Baptist was baptizing them and he was encouraging them. You know, I would think before he got baptized, confess your sins and be baptized. You know, and it shows the washing away of your sins with the water. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, which I want to point out, these guys were like the religious preachers, Jewish religious preachers. So when he, that'd be John the Baptist, saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptisms, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, I mean, look here where John the Baptist, he's getting on to these religious people. They're all the way up, always up in the church. But he's calling them a generation of vipers. Who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Because we know definitely when Jesus comes back, it's going to be the day of judgment and his wrath is going to be poured out like the vine press. Bring forth therefore fruits meant for repentance. So to me it's saying if you repent, you ought to see some fruit of the repentance. You know, I'm not saying you're going to become this perfect person when you get saved and get baptized, but there ought to be some fruit there from the repentance. You know, turn it away from your sin. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham our, to our fathers, for I say to you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So here, to me, it relates to self-righteous hypocrites, you know, these Jewish hypocrites, Sadducees and the Pharisees, I mean, they're the direct bloodline going back to Abraham, and it's like, oh, Abraham's our father. Um, but like John 
the Baptist said here, you know, you need to be showing some fruit from your repentance. And now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. So if you repented, there ought to be some good fruits. And uh, if you're just living a hypocritical life on the day of judgment, Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. I, I don't know who you are, man. I know you went to church all the time and you gave your tithes and you worked down at the local mission and you gave out food to the hungry and poor. Um, but I don't know who you are, man. They're going to be cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes am not worthy to, to bear. So to me, he's saying, you know, Jesus is coming and I'm not even, I'm not worthy to even tote his shoes, you know, or tie his shoes or tote them. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So it's saying here that Jesus Christ is going to baptize us, not just with water. John baptized with water to repentance. But Jesus is going to baptize us with Holy Ghost and with fire. And I'll be honest with you, I don't understand the Holy Ghost, but with fire, the only thing I can think of there is that Jesus just puts a fire in you to, to live for him and work for him and witness for him and get up one day at a time and walk with the Lord whose fan is in his hand. So this is interesting here. John the Baptist is talking about Jesus has got a fan in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the grainer, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So to me, this is saying Jesus is going to separate the wheat from the chaff and he's got the fan in his hand and he's going to blow the the good wheat over to one side and the chaff to the other side. And it's like the Bible says, don't be lukewarm. Either be hot on fire for God or either cold. But notice what he's talking about here. Jesus has got the fan. He's going to separate, you know, the, the wheat from the chaff, the sheep from the goats. But this chaff, he's going to cast out into an unquenchable fire, the lake of fire. This never, this never quench. It's going to burn and burn and burn. And the people don't die in this unquenchable fire. They're just going to be tormented forever and ever in this unquenchable fire. I mean, you need to think about that. If you're not saved, you need to get saved and repent of your sins, turn away from them, and bring about fruits that are worthy of repentance. And I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the nine gifts of the Spirit. I don't have the gift of speaking in tongues or interpretation of tongues. But I believe in those gifts, and I think that it ought to be like the Bible says, it ought to be... You know, if you're speaking in tongues, there ought to be by one or two, no more than three. There should be no interpretation. Sit down and shut your mouth. You know, um, God is not the author of confusion. Okay, verse 13 through 17, and then I'm going to quit there for today. Verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan, meaning the Jordan River, unto John, which is John the Baptist, to be baptized of him. So here comes Jesus from Galilee to John the Baptist to be baptized. Now I'm going to really elaborate on 
these next verses because I think they're really, really important. And I think a lot of your Bible instructors and preachers never read this in the church, never bring it up, don't talk about it. Um, that's a good reason why you need to read the Bible. But John forbid him. So Jesus, he's walking up to John the Baptist saying, hey, I want to be baptized. And John is like, no, 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 man. Uh, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, of you. I, I, I need you to baptize me. And you... Thou comest to me? I mean, you coming to me, Jesus? I mean, I need to be. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus like, hey, we need to do this because this has got to be done. We got to fulfill the word of God here. John, you need to baptize me now, today. Then he suffered him. That means to me that John the Baptist said, okay, we're going to do it. And that's what they did. Now here are these next few verses, 16 and 17 are the ones I'm talking about that very few preachers ever read out of the Bible. And I know my mom and dad, they were both oneness Pentecostals. And they raised me. I, I remember going to that church from like six, seven, eight years old till I was like 15. And I never did join the church, but mom and dad, I think they were members and they went all the time and we went with them. And so I got to understand, you know, and, and see their oneness view, but there's even, it's like I'm a member of a Baptist church and there's a lot of Baptist preachers that they're oneness. Now, I guess they don't believe in speaking in tongues, but a lot of them are, are oneness. I guess some of those Baptist preachers, if they did go to speaking in tongues and baptizing in the name of Jesus only, I mean, they might as well just join the oneness Pentecostal church. But um, I know we need to rightly divide the word. And like I've said in my prior videos, I believe that Father God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost are one, but they're also separate. And uh, it's like I read in one place in the Bible, it says there are three that bear, three that bear a record in heaven. And that's the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and they are one. I believe that, I accept that. And the Word is Jesus Christ. He was the Word made flesh. So I believe they're separate or one, but look at this. Now, if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, eyes and ears, you need to use this. And if you can't see this, you're blind as a bat. I'm going to pray for you. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. So Jesus was baptized, came straight up out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. The heavens, to me, that's like the sky and the heavens were opened up to Jesus. And he saw, Jesus saw, the Spirit of God descending like a dove. To me, that's the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. So you got to picture this. Jesus is in the River Jordan. Bab John the Baptist just baptizes him. He comes up. He looks up towards heaven. He sees the Holy Ghost coming down from heaven like a dove, in the form of a dove, and lights on Jesus. In verse 17, And lo, a voice from heaven, a voice from heaven, 
saying, This is my beloved Son. That's God the Father. God the Father is calling out from heaven. He's saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So this is such an important part of the Bible that you need to get a picture of. And this all happens really quick. And right there, you can see the Father, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus. God the Father is up in heaven, and he's calling out, and he said, Look, that's, behold, look at my beloved Son, and I am well pleased in him. The Holy Ghost is coming down from heaven. And lights on Jesus. And Jesus is down in the river with John the Baptist. So anyhow, I'm not going to beat that to death, but I hope y'all can see that. You can see the separation. And I know there's a lot of preachers out there. They'll say, uh, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Jesus left his throne and came down and he was born into uh, Mary. But uh, they won't read you over in the book of Revelations where Jesus himself said that he had a throne and the father also had a throne. He was like Jesus, he's got a throne and he's sitting down with his father in the throne. So you need to rightly divide the word. All right. Well, God bless you. I don't know what I'm going to do today. Um, even though I didn't catch anything yesterday, I really had a good time going fishing. And my wife, she had given me $600 for Christmas. I haven't spent it yet. And uh, I don't know. I might go around and look for a Christmas gift and uh, see what I can find. Well, God bless y'all. I hope you have a good day, a blessed week. Happy New Year's. Bye-bye.